Hi everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to your first leadership and mindset activation. So I'm just going to wait a few moments while people pop on. Um, and just give me two seconds. I'm going to see who starts to jump on with us. I'm going to pull up. Hi, Syndra. Welcome. I'm going to pull everything up that I need over here. Hello. Let me know. How's your day? I can see there's two people here. So we've got Syndra and you have to forgive me, everyone, because school holidays. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's quite loud in my house. Let me know if you can hear that. So I'm just going to leave another couple of moments. Who else is here? We've got Syndra and I'd love to know who else. Hi, G, welcome. All righty. Okay, cool. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. It's been a really rough week for me. So I'm sorry I haven't been super present this week since our call. Um, got off our call on Tuesday to some really dreadful news that I've very dear friend of mine has passed away. So hi, Zoe. Hi, Luke as well. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So you're familiar with that. Yeah. So, um, been pretty flawed to be honest. However, um, and usually I'm a bit more present in the group, so I haven't been as present for our first week and I do apologize for that. Um, I've just, yeah, been quite flawed with everything that's happened on, on our end. So that's okay. And, and I, I don't know if I think, I think every one of you is in my Facebook group as well. Um, I'll have to share it in, but I did a Facebook live yesterday talking about some of the big takeaways that I've learned from, um, my dear friend, Ari Carla, who was also one of my mentors and, um, one of my colleagues as well, who passed away on Tuesday. And, um, you know, one of the biggest things that if you haven't watched it, I really encourage you to watch it because I've had lots of people reaching out saying, how powerful it was. And um, one of the biggest things that I learned from her is that we we are the only ones who stand in our way. And once we learn how to get out of our way, then we are actually, we can tap into what Ari used to call our infinite creative genius, which every single one of us has available to us and is incredibly, incredibly powerful. We all have access to this. It's just we're the only ones who get in our way. So Super, super powerful message to share with from from her through her, um, and yeah, it's been it's been a, it's been a really rough week. So thank you, Mary. Yeah, I appreciate that. But anyway, as we move on, we we process and um, and we move on. So I'll have a look. Hi, Jenny. Ah, oh, making ghee. Gee, I made ghee yesterday because I'm having some friends over tonight, and I'm going to cook for them your beautiful recipe that you taught me, which. Mary's um, Ayurvedic dal recipe is the most um, incredible thing I have ever tasted. And they're all coming over to have dinner tonight, all of um, Ari and, and our friends. So that's what I'm cooking for them, soul food, which I'm really excited to be able to provide that for them. Thank you, Mary, for teaching me your incredible, incredible wisdom and magic. So I'm just going to pull everything up over here on my computer. So changing gears a little bit today for our... Leadership and Mindset Activation, our first one, we're going to be diving into what I call goal or belief trauma. So this is, I always generally start here and the reason I do is because we're working through this program, the Lightworkers Activation Code, we're working through some very, very big goals, right? We're going to be setting some big goals. We need to take big action that's in alignment with those goals we must believe in ourselves, right? That's, you know, that phrase when you hear, oh, they just, she didn't have her heart in it, right? It's really important that we have our heart in what it is that we're working on. And goal trauma or belief trauma, you can think of them as two, you know, one and the same, is like a trauma to the heart chakra. And in order for us to take on this program, give it everything that we have, set massive goals and take action to achieve those goals, we must, must, must move through any traumas or any things that have happened in the past that hold us back from believing in ourselves, that prevent us from setting really big goals. And I'm going to share a little bit more about why that's the case. So when we have a goal or a belief trauma, these are the conditions. Okay. So a belief trauma is set by, if you cast your mind back to something that may have happened in the past, where you were working really, really hard on something, you had a really big goal that you'd set, and you put in 
all of your energy, right? You put in so much self-belief. You believed that you could do it. You tried, you, you may have even, there may have even been some sort of sacrifice, whether you worked so hard, you sacrificed your health or you sacrificed some relationships or something happened, but for whatever reason, it didn't turn out. It didn't go down well, right? Quote unquote, it failed the thing that you were working on. So I want you to all let me know through the Facebook Live if you can resonate with something like this that's happened to you. So if there's something that's happened in the past, you set a really big goal and you put in lots and lots of energy, lots of self-belief, lots of determination, and for whatever reason, it didn't happen. So I want to hear from you guys if every single one of you can remember or relate to those conditions. And I'll wait for your responses and have some tea. And goal trauma or belief trauma is so powerful, right? Because if we have this experience in the past where we tried and, and, and to our mind we failed, then subconsciously we can have some narratives that start to kick in. Absolutely. We can have some narratives that start to kick in going, you know what, that was really painful the last time. Maybe that was really embarrassing. Maybe, you know, there was a lot of sacrifice that I made as a result of that thing. And so I'm not going to try so hard again. Obviously, we don't think this consciously, right? It's super, super unconscious. But we go, we, we kind of dive in and we go, I'm not going to put 100% in because I'm always going to be holding myself back in case something happens, right? I'm always going to kind of have one foot in and one foot out in preparation for everything falling down around me. And as a result in business and in what I'm going to be asking you to do in this program, if we have this, right, if we have this, this conditioning or this programming that's happened from the past that we've taken on from the past, then we will, we won't put, we won't kind of submerge 100%, right? We'll, we'll play it safe. Yeah, we'll, we'll dip our toe in. Maybe we might even put like a leg in. We might even like submerge halfway, but we won't actually submerge a full 100%. And as a result, we hold ourselves back, right? And energetically, this is super, super powerful. People can pick up on it. People can um, can sense that, that you're not quite in 100% and you won't give it your all, right? And as a result, we know generally how that kind of turns out when we don't give something out all. So let me have a read. My first marriage. Okay. I can, as a little child, doing something I was excited about and then being corrected. So it doesn't have, doesn't have to be a conscious goal. Okay. So something, okay, okay, okay. I would like, that would work. Something that you were excited about and then being corrected. I want you, I feel like there's something a bit more, a bit deeper for you though, G, with this. So what I'd love you to consider, maybe something that you actually took action on, and it doesn't necessarily have to be when you were a child. This generally, and it, it, it often can, but generally this is like when we, when we take on something really big, right? And it can often happen as a teenager or as an adult as well, where we take on something like a really, really big goal. I hear people say, you know, like, a business that failed or, you know, for me, it was a university degree that I believed that I could do, right? I, I was studying international politics, which is like, so not me, but, you know, I really believed that I could achieve this thing. You know, I really believed that I could, that I could do it. I wanted to prove to the world that I could do this degree, right? And, and I didn't, I couldn't, I hated it, you know, but I was half in, half out. Like my brain was saying to me, you've got to do it. You've got to show the world but my heart wasn't in it, right? So as a result, I didn't get the results that I wanted and had a big story for a long time saying, well, why would I try again? You know, why would I try? It led to so much, you know, mental, a lot of mental health issues and things like that for me. So until I really broke this down, I actually, you know, that programming was very present. So let me have a look. Um, Sindra, you can both, you and Luke can both definitely resonate. Mine is giving my all to a project with scouting and then not being received. There you go. So absolutely. Okay. I'm just going to have a look here at Zoe's. Not sure why, but what, not, not sure why, but what's coming up for me is maths in high school. I was doing intermediate maths and struggling. My teacher said, you're stupid. You can't do this. You do art and creative stuff. You don't need to be doing basic drawing maths. 
I've always decided I can't do maths, numbers, money, and I'm stupid, an old issue my dad often said. Okay, so for me, it sounds a lot like that intellectual side, right? That, well, that left brain. Yes, my first degree, I tried, and everyone after that. Okay, and every one of them after that. Okay, so the importance, like the reason why this is so important as well is because, you know, we all know the importance of goal setting, right? Everyone talks about how important goal setting is, how goal setting is, you know, will be the thing that like if we can't set big goals then we're not going to actually end up achieving big things, right? If we have a goal trauma, right, that's actually a trauma to the notion of setting goals, right? then as a result, we don't end up achieving the things that we want to, right? So we kind of go in, we go in halfway. And in order to break free from that, what I like to do is this pro in this process, and I'm going to do quite a bit of this with you guys through these lives, is what I'm going to take you through a visualization where we're going to be gathering lots of information about this experience. And then we're going to be doing some tapping. Okay, so the tapping let me know if there's anyone on this on this call, on this live, who hasn't experienced tapping before. But the reason why I love tapping so much personally is because it's literally at our fingertips, right? Um, we Tapping is a clinically proved modality, clinically proven modality that actually releases through our nervous system, right? It can release trauma, it can release um, post-traumatic stress, it can release so many different things. It's super, super powerful. And when we combine tapping with business and the stuff that blocks us in business, magic happens, right? We suddenly have a tool that we can use in the moment, yeah? So if there's things that I've asked you to do that maybe so, like consciously you're going, I don't know if I can do that. All you need to do is pull out your fingers and do some tapping. I'm gonna, if there's no one here who has actually experienced tapping before, I'll, I'll talk you through when we get to that stage. And suddenly you have this amazing modality, this amazing tool to help you in the moment. So I use tapping before sales calls. I use tapping before I go live. I use tapping before client calls. You know, it's really such an incredible modality. So let me know if there's anyone who hasn't experienced tapping. And if you have experienced tapping, I know, I know Mary, you've, you've done this with me before, um, but let me know for everyone else who hasn't experienced it. And then we're going to get started with this visualization. So goal trauma, super, super important to move through. This week, and Luke, I know you're on the call as well. So Sindra, can you let me know what Luke is, um, what's what's coming up for Luke as well? So Because that's quite important for me too, to understand. And we've got five people, one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, that makes sense. So trauma to the heart chakra, right? If we have something like this, we don't believe in ourselves. Yeah, we, we hold ourselves back. The heart is where we connect as well. So anything that traumatizes the heart chakra is going to put these barriers between us and other people. And this program, I'm going to be teaching you all um, connection marketing strategies, right? So connecting with your tribe, with your community, connecting with everyone around you is one of my favorite ways to make sales, right? Because it makes sales really easy. Once you have this connection with people, especially with women, but with men as well, of course, once you have your connection with, with, with your tribe, with your community, sales become very easy. So you really wanna work on anything in the heart that's gonna prevent us from being able to deeply connect with people. Okay, I've dipped my toe into it, okay. Let me know what you mean by that, Luke. Leaving a job and wanting to have everything completely organized and finished, then felt overwhelmed and gave myself a cold so I had a, an excuse not to continue. Okay. And it's amazing how we can, you know, bring up physical illness, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a little visualization. So I want you, if you have anything in your hands, obviously if you have, you know, your phone in your hands, it's going to be important to put it down. But I want you to put anything in your hands down and I want you to put your feet flat on the floor and I'm gonna take you through a little visualization process that's going to help us to uncover more information here. So just when you're ready, coming into your body and closing down your eyes. <coughs> and taking a really big deep breath. I'm so sorry if there's a bit of noise and you know I couldn't find my headphones which makes it even worse. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit of background noise guys, big apologies. So taking in a big deep breath and just coming into your body for the first time today potentially and 
Noticing how does your body feel, first of all. We're just going to be doing a quick check-in. How does your body feel? What does your body need? And then we're going to be doing some visualization. So I want you to imagine that behind your eyes is a movie screen. And on that movie screen is a movie. And this is the movie of you in the moment when things started to go south. Okay, so the moment this experience that we've uncovered, this memory, when things started to turn, when things started to go south. And I want you to just allow yourself to watch that, that movie from the beginning all the way through to the end. And the beginning is going to flash a movie title so just checking in, what's the movie title of this movie that you're about to watch? What's the movie title? Checking in, and making a mental note because we're going to be revisiting that. And then I want you to start to watch this movie, okay? When things started to go south, your big goals that you were working on started to disintegrate, things started to unravel. And I want you to just see what were the circumstances? What were the circumstances surrounding this experience? What's your judgment? on yourself for how things turned out. Was there any external judgment on you? And what was the impact of this experience on your life? What did you make it mean? about yourself, about the nature of you reaching your goals, your likelihood to reach your goals. And what did you make it mean about your self-belief? So just gathering as much information as you can. And when you're ready, I want you to let me know in the comments the answers to these questions. And they might take a while for them to come through. So that's okay, we've got time. So I wanna know, first of all, what was the movie title? And I'm gonna be taking some notes because I'll be crafting this into a tapping script. What was the movie title, the name of this movie when things started to go south? What did this movie get called? What have you called this movie? Because this will say a lot straight off the bat. And for some people, this can bring up a lot of emotion, okay? And if that's happening for you, that's perfectly okay. Oh, hi, Sarah, you're here too. That's totally, it's like the, when the emotion comes up, that's actually a really good thing, okay? You can't do it. The girl who lost her way. When shit goes south. <laughs> My failed life. Okay. Now I want you to let me know what's the emotion, okay? So when you tap into this memory, when you watch this movie on this visualization movie, movie screen, what emotion, I want you to name it. So what's the emotion that comes up? See, I told you, you can't do it. Is it anger? Is it disappointment? Is it sadness? Is it grief? Is it frustration? What's the emotion?
not being accepted. Defiance. Disappointment. Almost surprise. I didn't know it was there. So underneath the surprise, Sarah, there'll be there'll be emotion. And potentially, if you didn't know that it was there, it can often mean that our conscious mind has gone, mm -mm, I don't want that, right? I don't want to think about that. I'm pushing that away. So what's underneath the surprise? Because surprise can kick in sometimes as a bit of a deterrent to the emotion that's really underneath it. Shame, embarrassment. And it's interesting, isn't it? Embarrassment is often shame in disguise. Guilt. Give up and resentment. So that give up, would that be kind of like apathy, Zoe? Kind of like, ah, oh, I'm getting apathy. Tell me if that resonates with you. Clenched teeth. Failure. And I want you to tune in. What did you make this mean about yourself? What did you make this experience mean about you, about the nature of your likelihood to achieve success? Sadness. Okay. What did you make it mean? And this is one of the most powerful questions that we can ever ask ourselves, right? Especially when we're doing deep inner work. Okay, we're back. What have I made that mean? What did I make that mean about myself? What did I make that mean about others? What did I make that mean about the universe or, or, or the world? What did I make that mean? I can't work with others. I need to do it all on my, on my own. Okay, that is a very powerful belief to tap into and I'm gonna talk about that in a sec. I can't dream big because I'm not good enough. And that's exactly right, Sindri, you've nailed it on the head. Can't dream big, right? Because I'm not good enough. Because see that thing that happened in the past, right? Why would I ever allow myself to dream big again? So you can see that's a classic, classic sign of a goal trauma or a belief trauma. If I don't believe in myself, how can I ever dream, dream big, right? Because I don't believe in my ability to commit to it or to follow it through or to finish it or to action it. Right? And Mary, I can't do things that are hard. Can't do things that are hard. I'm taking notes. Right? So I'm going to, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the easy out, the, way, the easy way out, right? And then that instills this belief pattern, right? Then we gather evidence to the reticular activating software in our brain, right? That says, see, there I am, there I go, not doing, not, you know, not, not taking things, not doing things that, that, not taking on things that are difficult. There I am taking, taking the easy way out. Going big won't be accepted. Wow. So we hold ourselves back, right? We hold ourselves back. We kind of play it safe, right? Because if I go big, if I go too big, I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to actually be accepted. I'm going to be castrated from the tribe. I'm stupid. If I get it, if I get it wrong, others will show me as a failure and I'll be in trouble. Okay. That's interesting. Never heard it before. I had to strive higher towards the more socially accepted path, path of success, ignoring dreams. Interesting. So with that, the more socially accepted path of success and striving toward that, ignoring my dreams, what did you make that mean about yourself? Or what did you, how did you judge yourself? Here comes the tension and tears. Okay, so if you're finding this to be, to bring up big emotion, I want you to just start by tapping here on the collarbone points, okay? So not super heavy, not super hard, but we're gonna just start the process. And once again, let me know if there's anyone who hasn't done tapping um, and I'll, I'll explain it a bit more. I wanna go back up to, Jenny, okay, so I need to do it all on my own, right? So this is a very second chakra belief, yeah? It says, why would I trust other people? You know, why would I trust others? I'm, I, I, trusting others leads me to be vulnerable, right? And so as a result, it's not safe for me to be vulnerable. So 
you know, I'm, I'm going to do it all on my own. If I, if I do it all on my own, then it means that I don't, that I won't ever have to rely on other people, right? And energetically, this sends a message out to the universe that says, I don't need support, right? I don't need the support of others. I, I can do it all on my own. I don't need the support of the universe, right? I don't need the law of attraction to work in my favor, right? Because I'm bloody well going to do this all on my own. So we end up building this cycle or this neural pathway that says it's not safe to trust other people. It's not safe to be vulnerable, right? It's not safe to be engaged with others. I'm going to do everything on my own. And as a result, drive myself into the ground is often the result that comes from this kind of belief. So let me know if you resonate with that, if you've kind of seen that pattern play out for you. Being different was too scary. Don't be high. Don't take up space. Yeah. And it's super re related to, you know, that tall poppy syndrome we have here in Australia, right? Where it's like, don't get too big for your boots, you know, don't draw too much attention for you to yourself. Yes, burnt out twice. There you go. Not that good, Mary. Okay. Um, however, in this program, and, you know, if you follow my work, you'll know that I believe wholeheartedly that it is our uniqueness that is our best selling point, right? Our magnetic authenticity is the thing that when we can really learn to lean into that, that's when things start to, to work in our favor, right? By literally selling our services, selling our soul work by being ourselves, right? By being the, the most magnetic, magnetically authentic we can be. However, if we have a belief that says it's not safe to take up too much space, right? It's not safe to be different. I have to conform to the tribe then you can see right then there is that clash of, of beliefs, right? And the deeper, more um, subconsciously ingrained belief will always win. It will always win because our subconscious brain is like 94% of our brain processing power. Okay, so it doesn't matter how much I could tell you, just be yourself, just be, you know, magnetically authentic, you know, and this is going to lead to business success, right? Hi, Lucy. It doesn't matter how much, Lucy, you might want to come back and watch this from the beginning, darling, because it might not make that much sense. Um, you're most welcome to watch from here on in. However, um, consider that it's not going to make too much sense for you at this point, but that's okay. Um, you know, when con subconsciously you've got this belief that says it's not safe to be different. Like, why the frig would I want to be different when I, you know, the last time I was different, I was socially castrated, right? So we really want to start to really pay attention to what's happening in our conscious and subconscious brain and in our nervous system, right? All of this stuff is stored in our nervous system. Visibility is a massive nervous system thing, yeah? So really, really, really important to start to capture these beliefs, all right? These beliefs, these stories, these judgments. Now, one more question. I want to just check in and, and to ask you, when you looked at that movie, I mean, when you tapped into that memory, was there judgment from other people about this situation that happened? I know some of you have referred to that, but some of you haven't. So what was the judgment from others? And this is important to capture as well. How did, other, how did you perceive other people to judge you? So I'll let you come back to me with that, those answers. We've got some tapping here. <clears throat> What was the judgment from others? I'm not that good. And to me, Mary, that's kind of like a medium, you know, I'm not that good. I'm kind of medium, a medium. Let me know if that resonates with you. I don't live up to expectations. There you go. Cause I'm medium, right? Don't live. expectations. I actually think the judgment was my own projection of self and it generally is. Yeah, generally is. Okay. So one more question. My parents especially were angry and upset. Like, why can't you just finish a damn degree and get a real job? Okay. So there was that perceived judgment, right? You're not good enough. Yeah. Going against the grain. Definitely. Average is safe. Oh my gosh. What a massive, massive belief to uncover. Average is safe. Wow, that's huge. That's really, really, really happy that you uncovered that, Mary, because that's such, such a big thing to uncover, 
right? Because average is safe. So why would I want to be great? Why would I want to be brilliant, right? Because that's not safe to me, yeah? Being average, being in the me being in the middle, where I'm kind of covered, I can hide back with other people is safe. Massive. Judgment from others told you so. What's the point of doing it because you can't do it? Ah, there's the apathy, Tash. Okay, thought so. I felt... I felt they felt threatened, so I heard that I overwhelm people. Ooh, and I know a lot of women hear this, right? Um, you're too overwhelming. Oh, what's the other one? You're so intense, right? Or a belief that I'm only average. Okay. Has anybody ever heard that, right? And it might be related to this, right? You're, you're, you're too intense. You're too intense for us. You're too intense for me. So when we when we hear this, especially when we're kind of in the in the earlier stages of life, like before kind of 20 years old, we teach, well, it's not safe to be intense. So I have to tone myself down. I need to pull myself back. Right. I need to come back into my safe zone. OK, so we're going to be challenging all of this as we move through this program in the most beautiful of ways. So an average isn't good enough. Yeah, so I'm not good enough, right? I'm not enough. Okay, so I'm just going to very quickly run you through the tapping points. So we tap with two fingers, too fast. Yep, yep, okay. All right here, calm down, you're hysterical. Okay, so two, two fingers. I like to do one hand and then swap to the other. You can do both at the same time if you like, but the tapping points, I often get an itchy nose when I start to tap. So we tap here. The first one is where the eyebrow skin meets the, the, the eyebrow meets the skin. And then the second one is the side of the eye and then under the eye, under the nose, oh, itchy, top of, the, uh, top of the chin, and I'm going to be doing this with you, the collarbone points, so you can just watch me if you're not sure, the bra strap or under the armpit, and then the top of the head, and then we move on, okay? So that's the typical tapping points. We're going to start, however, with the karate chop. Okay, and I have some, I have, oh, where'd you go? I have my um, script here. I'm going to be interspersing it with your words. What I want you to do, first of all, is just close down your eyes, take a really big, deep breath. Put your feet on the floor. And that emotion that's come up, it's that elicit an emotional response. I want you to lean into them just for the duration of the tapping. I want you to give yourself permission to intensify the feelings, right? This is called emotional freedom technique or EFT. But in order to be emotionally free, we have to allow ourselves to feel. So you might find that as you go through this tapping process that emotion comes up, right? Because we're working through the meridians. These are all meridian points, the points that we're tapping on, okay? Which in turn directly impacts the nervous system. And because we're speaking words that potentially we haven't actually spoken out loud, whilst doing this release tapping, it releases stuff. It releases big emotion, okay? And this is a good thing. This is a good thing. This is often the emotion that's been stored in our body for a really long time, a really long time the sooner we can move it through our system, move it through whether that's tears, sometimes laughter, like, or shaking, or, or even just simple tapping, right? The more we can do that, the quicker the emotion will start to, to move, meaning that the trauma of the experience is going to start to lessen. We're gonna talk a bit more about that in a sec. Okay, so let's get started. So we're gonna start tapping here on the karate point. So it's literally chopping here. On the point here the point is right where that that line reaches the side of the hand so let's get going so I'm gonna say a line and then you're gonna say a line as well I'm gonna be looking at my script and alternating it with your words even though I have this story so you're repeating after me and it's a shit show I love and accept myself with compassion because carrying this is heavy. Even though I have this story and it's full of pain and judgment and sadness, I totally honor myself and all the weight I've been carrying. In this story has honored me 
and I'm open to releasing it and loving and, ex and accepting myself with compassion and forgiveness. Okay, let's go through. Actually, I don't know if I can forgive myself because this is really bad. This memory, this movie, I really screwed up. I failed big time and it's kind of unforgettable. I hope we don't cut out. This was a nightmare and it was so much worse because I really did care. I really did want this. I really tried. I wanted to be open to miracles. I tried to be my best. I tried so hard and it didn't turn out. So much hurt, feeling like such a failure and no one to blame but myself. I lost so much and it still hurts, that memory. Pain, sadness, embarrassment, shame, disappointment. I see this movie, this story, it's like a really bad movie. But when I watch it, every time I think about my goals, sometimes this movie kicks me in the butt. But right now, I'm just gonna honor it. Honor the whole story. Keep going. I should have known better. I should have done better. And I really judge myself for this experience. I'm not that good. I don't live up to others' expectations. I am not, I'm not accepted by the tribe. I can't work with others. I can't dream too big. I can't do things that are hard. Playing average is safe. I wouldn't want to overwhelm people. I should have figured it out. I should have been stronger. And I'm angry at myself. I judge myself as a result. Maybe I was too trusting. Maybe I didn't see the writing on the wall. I just kept on going. Maybe I deserve this judgment because I'm saying the truth when I feel and recognize that I failed at this thing. I should have been stronger and smarter. I totally judge this old version of me and I have a lot of evidence to support that I should have done this better. And I'm just going to honor all of that. Okay, I want you to take a breath and close your eyes. And I want you to finish this sentence. What I lost from this experience was, what did you lose? So I want you to tap into that. What do you feel you lost? I'll just tuck that away. We'll come back to that. But I want you to pull up this movie screen once again. All right, this movie, You Can't Do It, The Girl Who Lost Her Way, When Shit Goes South. See, I told you you can't do it. You lost hope. Okay. I want you to look at this movie again, and I want you to see if it has shifted or changed at all. So we voiced just then your inner critic right? Some of that sounded pretty nasty. But often that, that's the kind of languaging and the kind of words that we use that our inner critic uses to kind of keep us down, smash us down into that hole, right? Into that box. So it's very, it's very powerful to voice that. So I want you to just tune into that movie again. I want you to see where do you feel on that scale of a four or even a 10 before if it felt really highly charged. 
Where do you think you would be now? Where would you be on that scale of one to 10 with emotional intensity? 10 being, get me off the planet, this feels too much. And coming back to that visualization, I want you to just see if you can see yourself as everything is going south in this movie, if you can see yourself in a slightly different light, can you see the external situation that you were facing? Can you see the extenuating circumstances? Are you present to that or is there still deep judgment or shame or guilt or disappointment? Generally, after a tapping round, even if that tapping round has been quite negative, we come back to a visualization like this and we can see actually it started to lessen its charge. So I want you to come back and let me know if that's happened for you. And if that has lessened or if that hasn't, if it feels like it's still emotionally charged, like that charge is still high. And we're going to do some more tapping, okay? So I'll just wait for your responses. And you'll get a really embodied experience of how tapping when we tap on past memories that have a lot of emotional charge, more compassion. Great. I feel tight in my heart. Okay, I'll write that down. And if that tightness could speak in your heart, Jenny, what would it say? What would that tightness say if it could speak, if you gave it a voice? What would it say to you? I want to hear that. Because that, that might even be like that trauma to the heart chakra starting to starting to expand, right? That heart chakra starting to, whether it's open up or start to, you know, you might start to find that there's a bit more space or it's like not trusting and safe, not safe to, not trusting and not safe to step out. Okay. So it's not safe to trust others, right? That often looks like I don't trust the universe, right? When we don't trust the universe, then we're not open to, to miracles. You know, we're not open to seeing how things could be, how I could be so beautifully supported, right? We're not open to that because we are so kind of in this space of like, I can't trust. I can only rely on myself. I can only do it myself. I can't rely on anyone else to help me. Not safe to step out, right? There's that visibility. So I wait for... Um, I think it might be Sindra and Sarah. I think, I think Zoe has had to duck off. She said she wasn't able to stay for the whole length. So Zoe, as you come back in to watch this to finish it off, let us know, has that visualization shifted or changed? And then we're gonna do some more tapping in a minute, okay? Because we wanna continue to bring down the charge, right? We can really see very clearly the, um, the, the beliefs, the limiting beliefs that have been instilled in you as a result of this experience, right? This is such important information for you guys, especially as we continue to do the work to, to expand, right? To be seen, to start the process of, you know, pulling down the walls a little bit, right? Softening the walls. We don't have to pull them down, but soften them, yeah? So that we can start to let other people in, so that we can start to let ourselves be seen, right? Which is this process, this beautiful unfolding that we're about to go, that we are going on. So let's do... There's less intensity to the memory. Brilliant. Alrighty, let's get started. Okay, we're going to do some more tapping. So we're going to start here once again. Even though I have this old story and I've been ruthless about it, I'm just going to honour myself. There was a lot going on at the time. I had to handle a lot and I took on it all. Maybe without a lot of support, I was doing the best I knew how. Okay, even though part of me says, no, I wasn't, my inner critic, I totally honor this old story. I honor that I felt a lot of pain and a lot of fear. My programs and paradigms were running unconsciously 
And given all of that, I actually survived it pretty well. And I honor myself now. I'm open to the idea that I could even be a little bit proud of how I handled it. Even though I have this old story and I, the old version, the old version of me would shout it from the rooftops that there's not an ounce of divinity in it. I'm open to seeing the gift because I learned some really important things. Okay. Tapping through the points, all this sadness, I honor who I am. I honor who I was in this story. Maybe nobody else did. So I do now. I had so much going on. I was doing the best I knew how. Do I need this self judgment on top of all of that? And I learned things in this event that have made me smarter. You bet it did. It made me stronger. It gave me strength because I survived it. I came out the other end. I didn't crumble forever. And even though there might still be some tightness in my heart, this belief that it's not safe to trust, not safe to step out, I deserve to see that maybe I've been the hero in this story. And as I let go of this whole story, this goal trauma, I come back to my goal for today, building my business, getting my soul work out there, making amazing money, doing what I love, feeling fully supported in my service to others, Sometimes it might seem crazy and impossible. That's okay. But the truth is, I really, really want it. I want this goal. And yes, I have some fear. Of course I do. I'm human. But I want this too bad. I want this too badly. And I'm going for it. And of course, I still worry about failure. I don't want to fail, but I'm open to seeing that maybe there's no such thing as failure, only feedback. I'm reminded that all the great entrepreneurs of the world failed many, many times, but kept on going. And I'm going for it now with all my brilliance, all my compassion. And I really want you to feel this as we're going through. So maybe even closing down your eyes and continuing to tap. All my brilliance, all my passion, all my energy. This is my time. This is my choice. And I may have done things the hard way in the past. But I believe that this can and will unfold for me miraculously. I am totally open and expecting that to happen. I'm open to this goal of building my business unfolding as a miracle for me. I'm open to this being an incredibly fun, amazing, exciting journey that will require me to step up with brilliance and leadership, with inspiration, with fearlessness, excitement and passion. I'm so up for the challenge. This is my time. And I allow this goal to be my hero's journey, inspiring me to grow, to stretch, to shine, to take courageous action. That means feeling the fear and taking action anyway. So I declare to all my unseen support team that this is my goal and I'm willing to give it 100%. This is my dream. 
to birth my business and be divinely compensated at the same time as I share my soul work with the world. <sighs> okay, close your eyes, take a big, big, deep breath. There was a lot of tapping just then. So I want you to just tune into how your body feels. And I want you to tune into your heart. How does your heart feel? Has your heart started to open with that tapping? Has it started to open? Can you feel a bit of self-belief starting to kick in? You know what, maybe I can do this. Maybe this is possible. That is what we want to really amplify. So just allowing yourself to feel your body and I want you to imagine your goal, right? This goal of building your business, of service, deep service to your community, of amazing financial abundance supporting you as you step up in leadership, as you step up in visibility, as you show yourself, as you allow yourself to be seen. And I want you to imagine that you can capture this feeling in a photograph, like a somatic photograph. Imagine you can just like take a photo of how this feels, like a somatic photograph of how this feels and tell your subconscious mind that building my business will give me this feeling. The more I build my business, the more I believe in myself, the more my heart will open, the more I expect miracles to show up. And I want you to imagine that you can enter into this movie, this memory of you when this goal trauma happened, All right? So this is you right now, the age that you are now can visit the younger version of you who was in all that pain. What message do you have for her or for him? What do you want to tell them? What advice do you have? I want you to offer them some advice. And it might sound like you're going to get through this. This is going to make you so much stronger. There's a gift in this experience. What's the gift from that memory? What did you learn? This is where the gold is, okay? So I really want you to uncover that. What did you learn from that memory, that experience? And when we know when a trauma has been integrated, generally there's a few signs. The first thing is that the trigger goes away. So when a trauma is not integrated, it means that whenever that trauma gets triggered to the nervous system, it's like it's being traumatized all over again. It's like it's happening right now. So we know a trauma is integrated when the trigger has been released. When we can see the gift in the experience, that's the second big one. So I want you to come in to let me know in the comments, what is the gift from this memory that you have learned that you can take forward with you? What did you learn about yourself or about the world that can serve you more deeply as you continue to move through? I want you to let me know because this is really important. I'm gonna wait for your comments as we're just about to finish up. And um, the other thing as well is that this final tapping script that we have just done, I'm going to be printing it off for, I'm not printing it, I'm going to be sending it into the group and I want you to tap on this every day, okay? Because this, especially that final one where we're tapping on being open to miracles, we're tapping on releasing the trauma, stepping into leadership, being fearless, being courageous. The more we tap, especially if we're doing this daily, 
the more this is wiring into your nervous system, I trust myself. I trust my ability to believe in myself. I trust the universe to provide me with op opportunities, right? And when we start to rewire that, it's like we start to notice those intuitive nudges to act. We start to listen to that synchronistic symphony that is around us at all times, right? The synchronicities that happen, we start to trust them. Super, super powerful, which means that we start to put this energy out into the universe that says, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm open. Okay. No one's experience defines me. Nothing is that important. Beautiful, Mary. I love that. Just go for it. You deserve to experience your dreams. And that's that like, yes, I'm going to give this a hundred percent. I'm going to, I'm going to dive in. I'm going to dive into the deep end. And there's not a shred of me going, oh, but what if, what if, what if I fail? What if, what if I'm just going to plunge in and give it everything I have. When I be myself, the tribe, Sorry, guys, the internet keeps cutting out. When I be myself, the tribe will show up. It feels like my heart is beating. I feel alive and vital. I love that. And that is so true. Your tribe, right? Your tribe, not the tribe that you need to conform to. Your people, yeah? Your people who are looking for you. And remember, the more times I allow myself to shine, right? This is my beautiful lightworker quote that comes in. The more I teach people and I... I teach people that it's safe for them to shine. Alrighty, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, that's our session. So you might find over the next few days, especially working with goal trauma, that memories will come up, potentially of other goal traumas that have happened. We can have lots of them. Just remember, you know, you want to do journaling. I love to journal, especially after doing these inner processes, right? Because stuff will always continue to flow out. So inner work, journaling, the tapping, I'm going to pop that in today. And anything, any other insights that come through over the next week, you're most welcome to come into the group and to share that with everyone. Share that with us, okay? Because that, the, when you share your ahas, your insights, that often triggers other ahas and insights for everyone else, okay? So that's really, really important is to share that with everyone. Um, and just to remember, like, you know, your heart is your connection strategy, right? This is, this is where we connect with the world. So anything that shuts us off here will shut us off from the world around us. Okay. I so resonate with that, Jenny. Alrighty, my loves. Take care. I send you so much love. I hope you have a great weekend. Um, and I'll see you all next Tuesday. Alrighty. Take care. Bye.